This is Tony from Good Japan, Bad Japan. This is a teaching English in Japan related episode, so I've got to give you your item of the day. That item of the day is this contact solution called Soft One Moist. And this is what my wife uses for her contact lenses. So the reason that this is the item of the day is because my video is about going to the eye doctor. So a little history. I'm going to teach you some uh, vocabulary along the way. Kenko shindan. Kenko shindan. Think of this as a physical. You know how every year you should go to the doctor to just kind of get everything checked out? That's your, that's your yearly health check. Kenko shindan. So a couple months ago, after being in Japan over three years, I got my first one and they did a general eye check where I'm looking at the letter C and saying what direction it is. So my left eye is a 1.5. My right eye is a 0.5. I'm not really sure what the scale means. All I can say is that that's a big gap. And uh, recently I've been having a little bit of trouble seeing things far and away. Just letters seem to be a little fuzzy. Maybe I'm playing Pokemon Go too much. I'm a little too attached to my smartphone, but I figure since I recently turned 40, it was a good time to actually go in and see if I need glasses or, or just to find out more information about what's going on with my eyes. So as we get started, before I forget, ganka, ganka is the word for eye doctor. That first kanji actually means eyeball in Japanese. So ganka is what you're looking for if you need to get your eyes checked. Uh, this is, this is by the way, separate from a place like Megane Ichiba, any place that will sell you actual eyeglasses. I'm going to an actual doctor for an official evaluation. I go in and what you'll notice in Japan at dentists or clinics, anywhere you go to, you have the Genkan, which is the, the little floor area right when you walk in. You take off your shoes and there are always going to be slippers. They want to keep the general floor clean. So just be prepared. Any healthcare place that you go to, be ready to take off your shoes and put on some slippers. When you walk in, one of the first things, and it's probably the first thing that the staff is going to ask you for, is something called a Hokensho. Hokensho. This is your insurance card. So whether you're um, Shakai Hoken through your company or whether you're paying insurance out of your own pocket because maybe you're under a 30 hour work limit, Re regardless of your situation, you will have an insurance card and they will ask for that. And this actually might be a little bit of a culture shock, so be prepared for it. They will not ask for any further identification. Your insurance card does not have your picture on it. They just say, you know, I can I have your insurance card? Can I have your Hoken show? Okay, here you go. They they don't they don't hold that up next to a, a driver's license or your residence card and go, oh, these names match. This is this is Tony. So this is just how open and honest a country that Japan is that you can just give your insurance card and no one really questions your identity. The only thing I can't speak to is if there's some magical secret database in the background where they can just pull up your picture and go, oh, it's him. But I doubt that that's there. Anyway, I give my insurance card and then you just sit and you wait to be called. I went in as a walk-in with no reservation. Okay, so while I'm waiting, I should have mentioned this. When I gave my insurance card to the staff, they gave me a questionnaire. And this is actually pretty common no matter what healthcare place you go to. And at the top, it's gonna have the basics. You know, what's your name? Where do you live? What's your phone number? What's your birthday? And so be prepared for that. Uh, hopefully you've gotten in some practice time and you can write your name in katakana. Uh, at the very least, you know your phone number and your birthday, and maybe you figured out basic kanji characters so you know where to write that. At the very least, with a form of identification, 
the staff should be able to fill that in for you should you have absolutely no Japanese skill whatsoever. I do, though, highly recommend that if you have no Japanese skill, that you leverage the company you work for to, to see if they're willing to call on your behalf and help with any potential translation problems. The bottom half of that questionnaire is all about your health and why you're there. And so I saw two big characters for left and right, which I assume, you know, which I assumed meant for my left eyeball and my right eyeball, you know, which eye is giving you trouble. Is your eye itchy? Are you having trouble seeing? Does it look cloudy? Are you here for just a checkup? So there's any number of reasons that you might go to the eye doctor and you're supposed to circle that. Now, I tried doing everything by myself, but I guess I was too slow and the staff called me over and then they just read the questions to me and put it in more simple Japanese. They're just like, hey, you have any other uh, health problems, any underlying conditions? No. Are you taking any medicine? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so pretty typical questions you'd get at most healthcare places. So then after handing in that questionnaire, I'm getting called into a special room where I'm putting my chin on a platform and putting my head up against something. And they just, they just say in Japanese, and everything's in Japanese, but they just say, look into this. I'm like, okay. And so they, they have this thing come by and it's lined up with my right eye. And then all of a sudden there's a big puff of air. And it totally caught me off guard. I had no idea that was coming. They did the same thing with my left eye. I guess this just kind of warming my eye up for the next part. Next part is what I expected. I told them, I said, I have no idea if I need glasses. And that's my biggest concern. And so I'm here for an eyesight test. And I'm sat down and across from me, a fair distance, are the letter C in a, any number of directions. And they light up the board. And, and first what they do is they will they will give you these glasses that cover one of your eyes. And then they start lighting up the board. And you have to call it out. Up, down, left, right. And it gets significantly harder the further down you go. And just as my health check showed, my eyesight in my right eye was incredibly poor. My left eye did far better. And they actually tried a couple of different lenses and asked me if I could see any better after, after wearing that. And ironically, nothing really changed. It was still pretty blurry with my right eye. So I, I wasn't sure we were, where we were going from there. But once that test was done, I was back to the lobby sitting and waiting for the next step. Okay, so for the next part, I'm called behind this to go behind this curtain where the sensei is, the eye doctor. And she has me rest my head on, on a device where I, I can't move my head and she tells me she's going to put some eye drops in and I get a little panicky because I don't do well with things in my eyes. That's just the kind of person I've always been. I believe it stems, it, it just goes back to some childhood trauma that I had. I just never do well when it comes to water or anything else going in my eyes. So I'm a little panicky, but I, I have to grin and bear it because that's that's how Japanese healthcare systems work. You do not question the staff or the sensei. They tell you to do something, you do it. So I just grin and bear it. The doctor has this lens type device where one side is, is a lens and the other side is like a funnel that gets progressively smaller. And she tells me to, to look up and she sticks it in my eye. And on her end, she's, I believe what she's doing is she's looking through that device and trying to get an idea of what's, what's going on behind, behind the scenes. So she does that for both eyes. Then she tells me to go wait in another area. It's a different area of the clinic. And I'm waiting there for about five or 10 minutes and I'm starting to panic because 
in front of me are a bunch of pamphlets and brochures on contacts and contact lenses. There's, there's a little dish in front of me, the kind that you would put contact lenses in to, to sanitize them or wash them. So I'm just, I thought, I, I thought I was just going to get a prescription for glasses and get the heck out of here. What's, what's going on? I, please somebody tell me something. And I want to, I want to share this with you who are watching this video, because this could be a very real feeling, especially if you don't know the language. And even if you do know the language, like I do to some extent, the process isn't being conveyed from A to Z. You're just waiting for the next step. You have no idea what's coming. So a staff member comes and she brings this chalice. It's really oddly shaped, but it's meant to catch liquid. And she tells me to hold this metal cup under my eye so that she can use this squirt bottle that has a very long, long nozzle. And she's just going to, to squirt water and clean out my eyes. And once again, I, I don't do well with that. And so I am, my reactions were priceless. I mean, my, my feet were twitching. My face is going like, I, it, it was really rough. I mean, I, it was traumatizing. <laughs> I, I know there's probably millions of you. It, well, if millions of you chose to watch this, water's like a non-issue for you. So I envy you. Um, okay. Anyway, she just said she was cleaning out my eye, but yet I don't know why. I'm in the contact lens area. Are they going to start sticking things in my eye? I, yeah. So I'm trying to get some information out of this person while this is happening and I'm getting nothing. I just have to sit there and let her like wash my eye out three times each eye before she sends me to the next station. So the next part actually wasn't so bad. It was just a CAT scan of my eyes. That's why they really wanted to wash the heck out of them beforehand to really make sure they were getting the, the, the cleanest pictures that they could. I put my head on another chin rest they told me to focus on this red cross that was inside the machine. So that's all I could really see. I could see like some red other background red light moving back and forth. So I can tell that there's some scanning taking place, but they did that with both eyes is just, um, just a very quick cat scan. And then the final part is, and this usually is what happens when you go to a clinic to get something checked out. You meet with the sensei again, and the sensei gives you the, the verdict, the final result. What, what, what does she think is wrong with my eyes? And so she was really sympathetic and really said like she, that she hoped I could understand <laughs> everything that she was saying. She was just really kind about the whole thing. And she had a textbook open because it was all Japanese, but the problem in question actually had the English words in parentheses. And so I'm going to find that here. It says, um, central ser seros chorioretinopathy. So I, I think if you just Google CSC eye problem, then you'll know what I have. So I, I don't mind sharing. To me, this is not a serious health issue that I think is private. And I, you know, I don't care if you know. Anyway, CSC, I saw the CAT scan printed out and it has to do with water buildup. And so I'm trying to understand the sensei's explanation. And so she's pointing at the pictures and she's essentially telling me that there's like a hole somewhere in my eye and water is going through there and that water buildup is affecting my ability to see. So the solution to this, and she was really good about using gestures, is there were two gestures that she did. Can you guess, can you guess what they mean? Here was the first one. And then the second one was, <laughs> she used the word reza a lot. 
So the, the way the Japanese say the word laser sounds an awful, it sounds pretty similar to how we say laser. That was very easy to understand. My assumption is that, and I asked for clarification. I'm just like, so you're saying I got a hole in my eye and it's a lot worse in my right eye and there's water buildup and what it is, is, is that there's a hole that needs to be sealed. Yep. Okay. So from there, what she did was she gave me this, uh, I think it's called a shotaijo, but it's an invitation. It's an invitation letter to a hospital. And that's why I'm not showing you the other side. So I didn't receive any health documents directly. The doctor gives you the spiel and then these, do these documents are for the next place. I get this feeling like it's not some kind of major surgery. I, For those of you who have experienced eye problems, I'd really love to get your feedback on any kind of same day laser eye work that, that you've gotten done. Was it easy? Was it not easy? Please put that in the comments because I have no idea. But anyway, that's the next step is she just said, you need to go to this hospital. They do this service and should be good from there. Last thing I'm going to mention as I close up this video is that the total cost for this was 3,740 yen. So I'm going to estimate that at about $35 American. So with my insurance, I got a CAT scan of both eyeballs. I received a, di a number of a different various other types of scans, a consultation, eye check. So this whole package cost me about $35. I thought that was pretty amazing. And I would love to know how my experience compares to someone getting similar services in America, the UK, or wherever your home country is. So I hope you enjoyed this video and, and found it informative. Just, uh, Going to the doctor in Japan is is definitely an experience, and I hope that you learn something. Don't wait to get things checked out. If there's one piece of advice that I can give you now is remember Kenko Shindan and just go just go to a clinic that does these. This is your yearly physical. It's super important. Don't wait on those because unless you're working for a big company as a full-time employee, Getting that done is likely on you. Your company is not likely going to push you to get it unless you're you're a say shine, a full-time employee. So anyway, I hope you hit that like button. I hope you subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for future notifications. And I look forward to seeing you next time.